Hello, it's Neil again, back for part three this time of building a beach buggy. Now, what are we gonna do this episode? Uh, we're gonna suss out our handbrake mechanism. Um, we're gonna run our tubes for the cables, for the throttle cable and the clutch cable through the, through the spine. Um, we get to use the lathe in this episode, which is, which is one of my favorite tools in the whole world. So uh, yeah, I think it's the first time you'll have seen that. There'll be a lot more of that coming up, I'm sure. Um, I won't waffle on too much, but obviously this is part three. So if you've just found this video, go back and check out the other two parts. Let us know what you think. And uh, yeah, like I say, I won't, I won't waffle on too much. I'll get building some stuff. Let's do it. There you can see we're all, uh, all sanded flush there. So the next job, work out where this handbrake hole is going to go. If I get the piece that I, that I chopped out, you can see on the inside, it's sort of double skinned to thicken it up where this, where this little nub sits. That's where the, um, the sort of ratchet mechanism for the handbrake locates over that. So what they've done is they've made it double thickness to, to beef that up a little bit. So looking at this, it's only stitch welded in down either side and these holes here were for the heater controls anyway, which obviously we don't need. So my logic is I can, I can cut it up here and up here, remove this, this double skin piece, which also houses the, the two little tubes there for the, for the handbrake cables to run through. So I'm thinking I can reuse that and just cut a new hole in the, uh, in the tunnel and weld that in. I reckon that'll work. I don't see why not. The other thing I cannot forget is those seatbelt anchorage points. So don't let me forget those. Hmm. Ah, I see. Not only are we stitch welded in, but we're also spot welded in on these little dimples. But that's all right, we can overcome that. It's actually in there a little bit more solidly than I first thought, so what I've done is just chopped it out. So now I have to carefully dissect it, remove this portion from this portion. It doesn't matter if I wreck this side because I don't need it. So just got to save that bit. So it's going to be some fiddly drilling, cutting, grinding, all that stuff, so that's next. That's worked out pretty good. Managed to get it out in one piece with some uh, precision butchery, but she's out. So, got to work out where we have to go. So, that's obviously the section that we've chopped out. I know that that line there is where our join is, obviously. So, just measured back to that point there. So that will put the handbrake in the in the factory location relative to the to the shifter and everything else. So now the job is to chop this hole out, weld this, if I put it the right way around, on the underside, and then uh, our tubes for our cables can be tacked into there. I'll just I'll put that down there. Okay, that's that marked out with holes drilled in the corners, obviously, to make it easier. For cutting fiddly stuff like this, obviously a grinder is going to be a bit too big and cumbersome to get in there. And these things, they rule. You go through a lot of them, but for a Dremel, little speed click discs. And you've got this little uh, springy little arbor thing there. Because the other ones where you've got to put the little screw in the end, they're a nightmare. They just They last three seconds and then they're a pain to change. But these ones, you just... Put it on, rotate it 90 degrees, click, in you go. Ready to start chopping.
So, I mean, you certainly go through them. That's that one done already. But you can be so precise with it. So much better. That came out nice and easy. I've left it just a little bit shy of that line there. So now I've got the boring bit of sitting here with a file and just... That's a nice noise, isn't it? Ooh. I'll spare you that bit. Okay, that's uh, sat under there. You can't see it. And uh, it's a bit of a wiggle to get those clamps in there to hold it there. But these little welding clamps are awesome. I use them all the time. So as I say, you can never have too many clamps. Anytime I go to the hardware shop to buy anything, if I'm only spending a few quid, I'll just get a clamp or two as well and chuck them in the drawer because they're so handy. This bit was a, a tad tricky. You can see I've got a torch there shining through this hole so I can see what I'm doing in there. Don't know if you can see, there's just a little, a little tab there, either side, which was uh, holding these, these conduits in place. Now, those end up a bit too close to where the handbrake mechanism is. So I had to sort of get in there with a long screwdriver and pry them open to, to pop these tubes out to, to free them up and then gradually get in there with blocks of wood and screwdrivers and things and, and re-bend them into shape because they're not they're not shaped anything like that so now i've got them uh bent bent into shape as best i can i can get to work welding that little plate in there not the uh not the easiest thing to do because i've not exactly got the smallest hands in the world but Bit of perseverance, we got them shaped nicely. Those cables are gonna travel through there nicely. Not sure how easily you can see that, but that's worked out pretty awesome. Got six six tacks holding the plate in, which is more than enough. And then uh, tack those tubes to those little little bits there, which is quite quite a stretch because it's, it's quite hard to reach in there with the torch, but that's worked out really nice. We've got a nice smooth path for the uh, for the cable so now what I've got to do is get in there with the Dremel with a cutting disc zip off these tubes and then that's that bit done there we are flip back over the right way up you can see where uh, where we've welded that plate in underneath we've got some uh, penetration all the way through there so that's that's in there nice and solid you can also see where I've done a few stitches around that that plate that was in there uh, so yeah we're all all good and solid there now so next job is to figure out how we're going to make something for the the handbrake to pivot on. If you're not familiar with how these handbrake mechanisms work, this little uh, little nub here sticking out that we've that we've had to leave there, that locates into just see that little notch in the in the ratchet mechanism there. So that goes in there like that. Gives your handbrake something to to sort of latch onto. Obviously, we need something for that to pivot through. Now the one that was there, you'll probably remember that from before was welded there like this it's a bit flimsy it's only it's only two mil thick not too bad when you've got the the heater controls on there as well because it's sort of supported on the front and the back but if i was to cut these off which obviously i will because i don't need them you're only left with this back part there and it's it's proper thin look at that i can bend it with my hand so don't need that gonna use a bit of this might look a tad overkill i've been on the scrounge at the local uh, local metal suppliers normally they're pretty good with with giving you off cuts like this you know that's that's a good almost two foot long which obviously to them isn't isn't a huge amount of use it was only sat in their scrap bin they're normally happy to let you have bits like this for for cheap or sometimes even for free so go and be cheeky if you ever need stuff like this it's useless to them but very very useful for me so what we're going to do is basically just use these nice 90 degree corners here. It's about three and a half mil thick on the wall, so it's a lot beefier than, than what was there before. Obviously it's much too big in, in all dimensions, but we can cut it, shut it, weld it back together, make something super neat. So that's next on the list. Okay, I've been chopping away at that bit of bottom section, so that's our, that's our off cut. You should be able to see, kind of get the idea of what I'm working with here. So I've just got it clamped to a uh, to a one two three block at the moment to keep everything square. Just covered the blocking tape so it doesn't get full of spatter and junk. Um, yeah, so it's all clamped up to keep everything straight. I've chamfered the inside of this groove here so I can just weld that up. 
grind it smooth and then we'll uh, we'll be on our way to having a handbrake bracket. Looking good. bush fire in there. That's alright. Oh dear. <laughs> I don't know why they thought making that guard out of plastic would be a good idea. Let's get some light in there. Look at that. That's smart isn't it? Whoopsie. handbrake bracket. Just got to weld that on there, machine up a little pin to go through for it to pivot on and then we can call that good. Way stronger than the uh, than the old one. I've made it slightly wider than the handbrake handle itself. If you see like that I should say. I've, I've made it so we've got, got a few mil either side. The idea there being, whatever the remainder, the remainder is of the gap, I can machine up some little nylon washers to go in there to stop it from, from slopping about side to side because nobody wants a sloppy handle, do they? Can't be having that. Right, ready? Cover your eyes. done we're upside down again and it's time to uh, to sort out these these tubes these cable conduits inside for the clutch cable and the throttle cable that's the one that we ripped out from the the clutch cable and I've got this stuff which is the same diameter and it's actually a steel hydraulic line the nice thing about that is it's it's seamless so on the inside there's there's no little seam in there where the sort of you know the tube is formed and then welded back together so there's nothing for the cable to chafe, chafe on so it's completely smooth inside so we got that one there I can't remember exactly what size it is 12 13 mil something like that and then we've got another thinner one there for the throttle cable so it's just a case of uh, bending a bit of a, a bit of a whoop de doo in it which I've already done to match the to match the old one and then one more thing I want to do is on the on the front end of it where the, the cable gets fed through it's sort of got a little bit of a, a little bit of a flare on the end there to again stop the cable from chafing on the edge there so I'll just show you a neat little trick for doing that there we've got the tube clamped nice and tight in the vice there clamped lengthways to stop it from from crushing you know if I put it vertically it would try and squash it and then all I'm going to use is one of these a drift not that one though it's too small that one See, it's got a nice little little flare on it there. 
I'm gonna pop that in there. Might have to just move you over a little bit there. And it's just a case of, I'll move you again. You see what I'm doing? Yeah. Give that a few dinks there. Look at that. Perfection. Okay, I've quick, quick chucked those in because it's a very simple job. This is obviously the one for the throttle cable. So all that holds that in is just a small tack weld on the edge of that tube. Doesn't seem like much, but that's all Volkswagen ever used. Obviously the tube is just there to sort of guide the cable. So it's the cable itself doing all the work. So that one just sort of shoots inside there. See, we've got one for the clutch and one for the throttle cable there. I've just knocked up a very quick bracket there um, just to hold those, stop them from rattling around really. So you can see how, how solid that is. Last thing I want is to plate over the bottom of this this chassis spine and then have the tubes rattling around in there and no way of ever getting to them. So they travel all the way to the back and just shoot out there, which is, you know, it's very simple. It's exactly how Volkswagen did it. I probably could have reused the tubes that were in there, but I thought while I've got access, it makes sense to, you know, refresh them, make sure everything's nice and new. So don't ever have to worry about it again. So that's another one off the list. Nice simple one. What's next? Just tackled another very small but very, very important job, and that's uh, the seat belt anchorage points. You can see in the piece that, we, that we've removed there, the hole where they used to live, obviously that's going in the bin, so we need to sort of relocate those. Um, if you look on the inside, you should just see some evidence there of, of, of what they were. It's just a piece of, um, piece of steel flat bar with a nut welded to it, basically. Um, which oddly enough is it's a 7 16th UNF thread, I think, um, which is, I think, the only Imperial thread on these entire cars. I could be wrong. Um, obviously, the Germans like things to all be metric fasteners, uh, but I think that's like a sort of international standard for seatbelt mounting, so, so that makes sense. Um, very straightforward job, so just obviously measure back for where they, where they, need to, where they now need to live. Um, draw the hole. I drilled a smaller hole either side, um, passed them through from the backside, held them in with a bolt while they were being welded. So just again, plug welded, filled those holes with weld, sanded it smooth. And um, yeah, so that's a very simple, um, but very important job tackled. So I'm glad we didn't forget that. Right, what's next? Hmm. I know what we can do. Let's make a pin for that handbrake. Remember we said about that? Little pivot pin. What have we got to do that with? Uh, ooh. That looks good, that looks good. Bit of that, I reckon. So we need a bit of that. And in there, there should be, yeah, bits of nylon and bronze and all sorts of stuff in there. Uh, what else are we going to need? Some bolts. M8 I reckon should do it. So we've got a selection in there. Let's turn all of that into a bit for that. Get to use one of my favourite tools in the whole wide world. My 1950s Raglan 5 inch lathe. She's proper old but I absolutely love this thing and any excuse to use it and I will. Especially like that, the old original supplier's plate there just shows just how old it is, but they don't make them like they used to. So, let's get cracking. What have we got there? 14 mil pretty much. So 
Right, here's what we've ended up with. So we've got our 14 mil pin with a thread all the way through it, an M8 thread, so we can get a bolt in either side. One nylon washer for one side, that's for this side, so that just fits up against there. This side's a bit different, so just put a little bit of a recess in there, so it fits over like that. So this puppy passes through there. Ooh, that's a lovely fit. And then that one goes on that side. A bit, bit tricky to do one-handed, but you get the idea. Let's, uh, let's go and bolt it in, shall we? There we go. Oh, that's satisfying. We like that. That'll do. And when the time comes, we'll machine up a nice little polished stainless button for that as well. But that can wait. Okay, that's where we're gonna end it for part three of building a beach buggy with me. We've got our handbrake mechanism sorted now. We've got our tubes run for our throttle cable and our clutch cable. Um, what we're gonna do on the next episode, I'm not entirely sure to be honest. You'll have to, uh, have to tune in and check that out. There's a few things that we can do next. So I'll do a bit of thinking about that over the next few days. As always, my Instagram is Neil of Steel with underscores in between. So by all means, go follow us on there if you use Instagram. Um, there's not just beach buggy stuff on there. There's hot rods, bikes, boats, all sorts of junk. So yeah, if that's your thing, check it out um, and again as always feel free to like and share and subscribe and whatnot all these videos because it yeah it really helps with getting getting eyes on these things um, and therefore helps with my motivation to, to carry on doing it so tune in next time for part four of building one of these but a little bit bigger because I don't think I'll fit in that one I'm barely going to fit in that one to be honest on that note Thank you for watching. Now, go and build something. It will make your life better, I promise. See you later.